Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm an artist in residence here at UF Health Shands Hospital. I'm sharing with you today a project that I often do with patients. These are both paintings that focus on a point of light. One works with only one color fading from white all the way to black and the other one works through the color wheel, starting with the lightest color, yellow, and moving all the way around. Stay tuned to watch the process, and I hope you'll join me in trying this project out. Thank you. All right, I'm using acrylic paint, but you can use watercolors, even food coloring, anything that you have at home. And I'm using watercolor paper. Uh, you can use any paper that has some thickness to it. Don't use copy paper, drawing paper, watercolor paper, cardboard, canvas, anything like that. And I'm gonna start with white and we're gonna move through a monochromatic color scheme all the way to black. So pick where you want the point of light to be in your painting. For this first one, I'll have the point of light right in the middle. And I'm just gonna start with a white circle looks invisible right now. Then I'll take this light blue. I'm not going to rinse out my brush or anything. I'm leaving that nice white on my brush and I'm just going to touch the corner into the light blue and going around that white circle I just laid on. I'm going to envelop it with some of that beautiful light blue. Still have the same paint on my brush. I haven't used any water at all. I'm just gonna touch a little bit more and I'll go outside of that ring. Working fast is good because it lets the wet paint blend. I'm going around until I see I've gotten through all the pores of the paper. All right, one more time with this color. Get a nice big dip of that cerulean blue. Blending into the wet paint in the layer before. Now with some of this color still on my brush, I'm gonna bring in a darker blue and just touch the corner into the paint cup. These paint cups are the same ones that we use in patient rooms. And around we go. Doesn't look like I got quite enough dark blue there, so I'm gonna grab just a little bit more. As my circle starts to get too big for the paper, I'm just gonna go right off the edge. I'm not gonna change my design or change my circle at all. All right, now I'll get a nice big scoop of this dark, rich blue. Blending in as I go. All right, last time for this blue, I'm gonna wipe out any of that remaining light blue and just get some dark blue. Moving lighter to darker. Right off the edge of the paper. Last, I'm gonna keep going to the corners with just a tiny bit of black. But beware, black is a very, very strong color and you only need a little bit. So we'll get some blue. And then just a touch of black and keep going. Now for the last round, I can get just a little bit more black on the brush. All the way to the corners. I'm 
Okay, I'm gonna set this one aside to dry for a moment and I'm gonna show you the same technique with different colors. Now, instead of going with one color from white to black, I'm gonna work my way around the color wheel. So the only colors I'm gonna need are red, yellow, and blue. Rinsing out my brush really well here. Okay. So I've got my red, yellow, and blue. I'm gonna start with a point of light again. For this one, I'm gonna use yellow for my point of light, and I'll do it in a different place this time. Okay. I have this nice warm yellow here, so I might as well use it and do another ring around. Now, working my way around the color wheel or working my way down the rainbow, the next color would be orange. So to get that, I'm gonna leave this yellow on my brush and I'm just gonna pick up a touch of red. Still not rinsing out my brush. I'll dip into the red again. The paint doesn't quite make it all the way around the circle. It's fine to take another dip. Beautiful. Now I do want to rinse out my brush because I don't want to make brown. So I'm going to take just a moment and get all that yellow out of my brush before I move to the next primary color, which is red. All right, brush nice and clean. I'm going to get just some pure red. Working our way down the rainbow, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of, oops, I actually didn't mean to rinse out my brush there. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'll get some red back on my brush, force of habit, and add just a tiny bit of blue, which is my third primary. right off the edge of the page. A little more blue. And one more dip of blue with a little red left on the brush. Again, working fast is great here because you can work into the wet paint that you just laid on. I'm gonna rinse out my brush, getting all of that red out, and then I'll do some pure blue. 
right off the corner up here. And down and around. With that blue still on my brush, I'm gonna go back to the first primary color, which was yellow. So I've got my blue, oh, I've got a shedding paintbrush. I've got my blue and I've got some yellow here. Without rinsing, I'll take that same brush and dip in yellow again. Right off the edge of the page. All right, now I've got two absolutely gorgeous backgrounds. I have one where I worked my way around the color wheel and another where I worked through from white to black using only one color. I can leave these like they are and they're completed pieces of artwork. Or I can use a silhouette technique to add further designs on top. Using just black, and notice I'm switching to a smaller brush, this can turn into a moonlight sky. It can turn into an underwater scene. Um, it could turn into lots of different things. For this one, I think I'm gonna make it as if I was swimming underwater with the sea turtles. Just adding black right on top of this previous design. If you're worried about using black on top of your beautiful painting, you can sketch with pencil first. You can also use a Sharpie. see we could have uh, corals growing like this turtles swimming towards the corals Maybe just a couple tiny little fish. This one to me uh, seems very much like a landscape and so I'm gonna paint a quick and easy tree on it. I'm gonna start my tree the big letter Y. Taking a moment to thicken up the trunk and the roots. Now, I'll take one of the branches of this Y and I'll make another Y. And I'll take another one of these branches of the Y and I'll make a Y that's even smaller still. Continuing to fork off as the tree grows.
there you have it. Two simple art projects that you can try from your hospital room, from your bedroom, or anywhere you like. Thanks so much for watching.